be continuing on the subject, Escape Hell. Escape Hell, part number two. Escape, as we said before, means to avoid something. Amen? And I was thinking to myself, this is such a wonderful message, such a wonderful topic the Lord has given to us. Amen? Because if he's telling us to escape, he's telling us to avoid. He's telling us something good. You know, in the world today, when people don't like you, they will tell you something like, go to hell. But they don't even understand what this hell is all about. Because you wouldn't even want your worst enemy to go to such a place. For those who have had experiences, who tried to commit suicide, some had bad accidents and whatever, all over the internet, internet, you can go on YouTube, you will see hundreds and hundreds of people who will tell you that they had experiences of going to such a place. And they will tell you over and over again, you will hear the same report, that the place is very smelly. A hundred hog pen, a hundred rubbish heap can't touch the scent of hell. Smelly! Not only is it smelly, but it's a very dark place. Not only is it dark, but it's a very scary place. People say they were terrified like they never ever been terrified before in their life. Also, the senses of the human race, when they go to such a place, the senses, they intensify. That means you can smell better. You can um, taste better. You can hear better. You can understand better. Everything is intensified. Even the feelings are intensified. So, it is a very scary place. Not only that, but the place is full of us and the ugly creatures. All sort of demonic looking beasts. If you hear how some of them look, you will be shocked. I heard Mary Baxter saying that she saw rat as big as human head. Snakes and all sort of venomous looking beasts. It is a very, very scary place. Also the noise that they are making down there is treacherous. It's worse than the worst horror, horror picture you could ever watch or horror movie. The sounds down there is very, very bad. It will make you shake and be terrified. So it's a very scary place, very smelly place. It's a place with all sorts of ugly creatures. And it's a place with all sorts of prison cells. One man said as far as, as he could see forward, as far as he could look upward, just cells and cells, all sorts of cells. And people are in these cells. And there is just a big, massive lake of fire down there. And there is no let up. People are in the lake and they are bawling and they are praying and they are crying out. And there is no let up. When you talk about worms, when you talk about crawly creatures, when you talk about all sorts of creatures that you wouldn't even want to come near you, they are down there in abundance. And they don't die. And they don't stop tormenting people. So I feel ecstatic. I feel good and I feel blessed and I feel highly favored. That God could be telling us on such a wonderful day like today, escape hell. Because we need to keep away from such a place. Do I have a witness in the house? Amen? Yes, amen. That will not be our portion by the grace of God. Yes. We will escape it. Because we have received numerous warnings. And we want to adhere to the warnings. Amen? One thing the Bible makes clear is that hell was not made for us. It was made for the devil 
and his angels. So we do not need to think that God wants to send anybody there. Oh, God has designed it for us to be there. No, 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 no. We sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for the whole human race and to give us an opportunity through his blood that we can all be free, we can all be saved, we can all be sanctified and escape such a place. Amen? Amen. So we are blessed. We are highly favored because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah! No man cometh to the Father but by him. Some people will tell you all roads lead to heaven. It's only that we are serving different gods. You have this person serving that other God, that person serving that other God. Don't worry about it. We are all heading to the same place. Who tell them that? The word of God tells us clearly in the book of Acts that there is no other name under heaven whereby man must be saved but the name of Jesus. Somebody show Jesus in the house. Jesus! Hallelujah! That's the only savior that we have in our world today. And once we have salvation through the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and through the blood of Jesus, we will surely escape such a place called hell. Amen? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! We see that there is a doctrine going around saying that there is no hell. There is another set of doctrine going around saying, saying the God of heaven who is so good and so merciful, he will never, never, never allow any of his human being creation to end up in such a place. God is not sending anybody there. It's people just making their own choices and so they end up there. It's not God designing it or planning it or, or want it to be that way. Because we were all born into sin. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah! Thank God for the blood that cleanses us. Hallelujah! And makes us fit for the kingdom. Hallelujah! Praise the name of the Lord. And so there are some who are teaching God wouldn't send anybody there. And don't even think that it exists because it's all a myth. It's all just scary tactics and all sort of foolishness. i tell you something. If I'm going to make a misjudgment, if I'm going to go wrong, let me go wrong on the side of safety. I don't want to die. I don't want Jesus to return. And then when you find the reality that it does exist, you're trapped and can't get out. It doesn't make sense. It's better to be relieved the truth and obey the truth and get yourself on the right side with the Lord. Amen? Amen. So that when he comes or when he calls, you have no regrets then. Because wheresoever the tree lies, that's where it's going to stay. He that is filthy will be filthy still. He that will be un he was un is unjust will be unjust still. He that is unholy will be unholy. He is unholy still. But he that is holy will be holy still. He that is righteous will be righteous still. Amen. How we live is how we're going to die. And so we have to make sure that we live circumspect. Walk very soft, the older brethren used to say, before God. The word of God makes it very clear that we could be saved, but we could still miss out through carelessness. You have the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. You have the parable of the servants who played around with the talent. You have the parable with those who was generous and gave to the poor, gave to the, those who were in need, and those who visited the sick, and those who visited the in prison. And the Lord said to them on the judgment day, in as much as you've done it to one of the least of these, you have done it unto me. So we see here, we cannot afford to be careless, we cannot afford to be selfish, and we cannot afford to be lazy in the kingdom. Because those things will cause believers to lose out. 
Some are teaching a doctrine that once you are saved at any time, you're always saved. There is no, no way you can lose out once you've been saved. And that's an error again. False doctrine, false teachers, and these are some of the signs of the times. Because the Bible says in these last days that people are going to have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive how many? Many. Not just a few, many people. And so we have to always remind ourselves of the truth and digest the truth. Just yesterday some false prophets turned up at my door and want to tell me some things that there is no heaven and all them things there, they're not going to no heaven and all them things there and I felt an anointing come out for me to preach to them. And I told them get it right. Make sure you get salvation through the blood of Jesus. Otherwise hell will be your portion. Get it right. They're just going around. You see them busy like, like be all over the place and they don't have no correct doctrine telling people. Busy like be. And I just felt an unction to put them right yesterday. They were young. And I said, let me just drop a seed. And I hope that they will think about it. And that they will read the Bible again for themselves. Not just take what they've been taught in their whatever place they have to do their worship. But that they will study the Bible and get revelation. And I'm praying for them that God will speak to them. Because they have so much zeal. They have so much enthusiasm. They're so focused. They're so committed. But they're teaching the wrong teaching. And my heart goes out for them because one day they will realize the truth, but it will be too late. So we see that the word of God tells us that it is true that we can be believers on our way to heaven, but lose out along the way. So there is no correct doctrine that says one save, always save. It is not true. Revelation 3 verse 15 tells us, Jesus said, the, I know thy works. That thou art lukewarm and need a corner hot. I and I will spool thee out of my mouth. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Revelation 2 verse 4 tells us, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. So we see lukewarmness. And losing our first love for the Lord can make us miss out. Verse 5 of that same Revelation chapter 2 tells us, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. Not only sinners need to repent, but some of us as believers when we lose our zeal and our passion and, and our first love for God and, and, and become lukewarm, we have to repent. And remember from whence we have fallen. Repent and do thy fr the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of its place except thou repent. So repentance is very important even among believers. Amen? When we are not where we should be in God. We can't afford to serve God half-heartedly. One foot in and one foot out. It's a joke. It's getting us nowhere. As a matter of fact, I always tell believers, if you're in God, serve him with everything you have. Enjoy salvation to the maximum. Because there is no point in straddling the fence and being just on the surface with God. Because if one foot is in and one foot is out, the whole body going to end up where? In hell. And it don't make no sense, you know, enjoy the world here properly and you're still not going to enjoy heaven after. It doesn't make sense. It's better to let the world keep its pleasures and keep its sin and keep everything that it has to offer. And at least after this life is over, then you will have eternal life to look forward to. Amen. It's not that the world don't have anything in it, you know. But we find that Moses said, I'm choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin which is just for a season in our last long. It's only for a season after a while it just dry up and I have no tears again. But thank God that in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. And at his right hand pleasures forevermore. If you're not enjoying the pleasures
pleasure and the, and the fullness of joy in God, that means we're not really plugging in. We're not really putting in all that we should because if we put in our whole heart with the things of God, we will enjoy God. Amen? And we will be blessed. And God will reward us for our wholehearted service and worship to him. Amen? Amen. I can't afford to be on the surface with God. Lukewarm. Losing my first love. One foot in and one foot out. And when the judgment day come. End up professing Christianity. But end up in the same place. With every rum drinker. And every liar. And every thief. And every child molester. And every homemonger don't, who didn't repent. It don't make no sense. It is foolishness. It is better to serve God if we are serving God. If you're serving God, serve him wholeheartedly. Don't be on the surface because you're not going to escape hell that way. But when we serve God the right way, we will escape hell. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody will say, Pastor, you're preaching old time preaching from back in the 60s and 70s and 50s and 40s and 30s. But holiness is still in style. Don't have a witness in the house. Holiness is still in style. Come on. That's the only how we're going to escape that place called hell. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So it goes to show that some people started excellently. Paul said, you did run well. Who did hinder you? They were doing excellent. Casting out devils. Healing the sick in the name of Jesus, prophesying. They were on fire at one stage. But somewhere along the line, some of these who started well, they slip off track. And because they didn't find a place of repentance, because they didn't get broken and contrite like David, the Lord will come and meet some of them off, target, off track. And on that day, they're going to say, Lord, we did so many things in your name. But he's still going to say, I don't know you. You were not intimate with me. You were not really close to me. You were serving me, but from a distance. You were serving me on your own terms, not according to what the Bible says. And so the Lord is bringing his people back in line with his word. Because holiness is required without which no man shall see. The Lord, no matter how sincere we start as believers, it's not really how we start the race that really matters so much, but how we finish. Can't afford to be complacent at, at any time as, as a believer because we need to end strong. Matthew chapter 24 verse 12 says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. When you see iniquity abounding, here the Bible talk about iniquity abounding, that means sin shall become plentiful. Yes. If you have spiritual eyes, you could see that sin is abounding. It's plentiful. You don't have to go far to see sin. Sin is everywhere. It's all over the place. And let me tell you something. Back in the day, people used to be ashamed and embarrassed to do certain things. No. They talk anyhow, they act anyhow, they dress anyhow, they behave anyhow, and they don't care. They think anything goes, we have been liberated to do as we please. So iniquity has abounded. It seems as if sin is in fashion. And because of that now, believers now who are doing so well, they start going with the trend. And because iniquity has become so plentiful, what was wrong, they're calling it right. What was right, they're now calling it wrong. So they begin to join up with the crowd and go with the flow. The broad road that seems so attractive, they are traveling with the crowd. But the broad road, what the majority is traveling, and it leads to destruction. 
But the narrow way, that narrow path that calls for holiness, that calls for righteousness, it leads to life eternal. So brothers, stay righteous, sisters, stay righteous because one day you will get your reward once you be true and faithful. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah! Glory! It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes people will want to mock you and say, Oh, that righteous living, you don't need to keep up such a, such a real um, stand for God no more. You don't need to, to, to live so straight now. You can't see what this other pastor is doing on TV. Can't you see what this other evangelist is doing on the internet? Can't you see? Can't you see? So join with the crowd, the Lord, the standard. Why are you still keeping up your soul? God has not changed and it will never change. Come on. Never mind the crowd. God is still God. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Come on. From everlasting to everlasting, God is just God. He will never change. But because iniquity shall abound and become plentiful and widespread, the love of many that was so on fire for God has gone cold. Going with the train, going with the crowd. But thank God for the remnant. Lord, I want to be with the remnant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture went on to tell us. In verse 13 of Matthew chapter 24. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Hallelujah. We're not, we're not running this race to go drop out. You know, sometimes you watch the athletics. I love to see a little running sometimes. And some of them start off so well and start off so fast. But along the way, they crank out. Some of them look as if they were only going to set the pace. And all along the way, after about two laps running so fast and leading the pack, they drop out. There's no victory, there's no gold medal for dropping out. But when you endure to the end and you cross the finish line, you shall be saved. Somebody give God praise in the house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, endure to the end. Endure to the end. No matter how rough it gets, stay with it. Amen. It's going to be worth it all when we finish. Hallelujah. The Lord will reward us. He's coming quickly and his reward is with us. He's with him to give every man according as his work shall be. It shall not be in vain. So be not weary in well doing my brother. Be not weary in well doing my sister. For in due season we are going to reap. Hallelujah. If we faint not. Amen. That's the key to success. Enduring to the end. Amen. Amen. People don't need to fret and make big to do. When any preacher, or any church leader, or any person professing Christianity is living in sin and in pretense and just pretending to be what they are not. One thing when they're in church and another thing when they're outside outside of the church because every hypocrite will be exposed on the judgment day every person who is not authentic they will be exposed and God said leave the wheat and the tears let them grow together leave them leave them so when I hear people telling me don't you know don't you hear what this other pastor doing and what this other prophet doing and what this other I tell them man this is how the Bible says it will be it has to be like that. Everybody not going to be real. These are part of this, uh, these are some of the signs of the time. That's why the Bible says that before he come back for the, for the church, that judgment will begin at the house of God. Right. So God is cleaning up his church. Yeah. God is cleaning up his church. Yeah. And we find that in this last day hour, we have to be sober and we have to be vigilant just drop our standard to go with the flow. Look at what it says in 1 Peter 4 verse 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear. All sinners inside the church and outside the church will be judged. 
We're living in a time of so much lies, so much heresy, so much deception, so much false prophets and false teachers, so much deceivers. But one day, the Lord will judge everybody. Amen? Amen. Amen. So don't fight up yourself with those who may not be at work, living as they are and living as straight as they are because the Bible says, let the wheat and the tears grow together. Don't block them up, you know. Don't pluck them up. It's not your job, brother. It's not your job, sister. It's not your job, pastor. Leave them to me, those who are not genuine. Because on the harvest day, they will be separated. The wheat are going to go one way and the, the tears are going to go another way. And I gonna, I'm going to separate them and burn up the what is not good. And what is good, they will be rewarded. Amen? So don't feel sorry for God when you hear people not living right. The Lord is in control. Amen? And he has not changed. And he will sort things out at the right time. The Bible says that hell is a serious place and a real place. And it's a literal place. But one thing that stood out with me when one brother was sharing about his experience of seeing hell and seeing some of the friends that he knew in hell. Some died in accidents and fight and all sort of things. And he said, one thing he saw in most of them is a depression. They were in a serious depression. Why were they so depressed? The fire is burning them. They're in torment. The creatures that are crawling all over them Every manner of torment you could, ex you, could, you, could, you, could, you could think about is going on. But he said why they were in such a torment and in such a depression. The depression came about, he was saying, because they were saying, we are trapped. Not only are we going through torture down here, but we are trapped. We can't get out. We can't get out. We can't get out. And so we have to be very, very careful to make the right decisions while we have a choice. While we have a chance to escape that place, let us take clear of it. Because anybody who finds themselves in that place, they say they can't get out. Don't come here. We are in torment and we can't get out. So they are in a state of despair and hopelessness. They are praying, they are bawling, they are crying out to Jesus, they are asking for forgiveness, they are doing everything possibly they could do. They are saying, Jesus, one more chance please, Lord. They are remembering all the wonderful messages they heard, all the scriptures they knew. They are remembering all of them and they are saying, Lord, give me one more chance and I will put it right this time. But it's just too late. It's just one chance. And so we can't afford to play around with the salvation that God has given to us. Endure to the end. Amen? Amen. Stick it out. Sometimes it's rough. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's challenging. But one writer said, I intend to reach the goal. Hallelujah. That's why I started. Hallelujah. I intend to reach the goal. I'm not turning back now. I mean to say that heaven will be my portion. Amen. Amen. I must make it in somehow by the hook or the crook. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. We don't want to play around. Some people will say some sins are not so big. So we could do that little small one and maybe the Lord will overlook that and we will still enter into heaven. No sin going to enter there. Revelation 21 verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and who are mongers and sorcerers and idolater idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake with burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. No sin will be unpunished. Small or big if it's not repented of it will cause people to perish for all eternity in that place called hell. And this is why I love this scripture. 
Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 says, We must all appear before the judgment seat of, of, of Christ. There is, no, there is no exempt. Everybody, rich, young, old, young, everybody, rich and poor, black, white, it doesn't matter. We must all appear before the judgment seat of God. There is no escape. Everybody have to face God at some time. And everyone may, that everyone may receive that thing. We receive the things done in his body. Whether it be good or bad. It really doesn't matter. According to that which you have done, whether it is good or whether it is bad, that is how we will be rewarded. God don't have any favorites. Sometimes you do bad in this life, but you still get you because you have the gaps, you have the look, you have something that just overlook the bad that is in you and they give you the promotion. They give you what you don't deserve. But there is no injustice with God. Every man will get according as his work shall be. And when it goes on to verse 11, when I hear this, it always resonates with me when I hear this scripture. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Listen to me. Some people, they just, every Sunday they go behind the pulpit, they are preaching God is love, God is gracious, God is merciful, God is kind, God is a protector, God is a provider, God is going to make you highly favored and prosper. Yes, it is so. But look on the complete scripture from Genesis to Revelation and you will see that there are scriptures that tell you there, so is his mercy, so is his wrath. And it is a fearful thing to fall into the lands of the living God. Serve the Lord reverently with godly fear because the God that we are serving is a consuming fire. We have to have the whole picture, man. And so knowing the terror of God. When you know what God can do, you want to warn and persuade people to be on the right side with him and not catch him on the wrong side. On the judgment day, everyone who hear this word should want to hear, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. It's the most awesome thing any human being could ever hear. But if any human being should hear the words, depart from me, I never knew you. It will be the worst disaster that could ever strike. Because if Jesus tell anybody those words, it would be better that they were not even born. Because what is ahead for all eternity will not be a joke. So when you know the terror of God, this is why we persuade men to avoid and to escape hell. Because we don't want anybody to go there and Jesus don't want anybody there. God don't want nobody there. The Holy Spirit don't want anybody to go there. That's why we're preaching about it. That's why we're warning. That's why we're talking about it. Because it is serious. The fact is, whether we want to believe it or not, we're not here to stay. So thank God for prosperity. Thank God for healing. Thank God for all the great blessings. But we're not here to stay. So even if we become the world wealthiest person and enjoy everything that this world has to offer, the Bible says, Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his one soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? So God is putting things into perspective today. And he's telling us, sober up a minute, brethren. Sober up a minute. Sober up a minute. Let us get our priorities right. And think ahead that we are here just for a brief time. Even if we lived for 100 years, 150 years. Not many people live into 150 now. But even if we reach there, it's still a little drop in the bucket to what eternity is all about. So we have to make sure that when we live this life, Hell will not be our portion, but heaven 
will be our portion. Somebody give God praise in the house. Amen. Because it is very important. Very important. Very important. One of these days, Jesus will either come or he will call us home. But once we are on the right side, we have nothing to fear. Nothing to worry about. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord is very, very clear. In, a, in a, um, Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 19. If ye, if, yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his evil way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So as a preacher, as a, as a minister of the gospel, when you tell them the truth and they choose to go the opposite way, at least there will be no blood on your hands because you have given the warning. But if we don't give the warning, then the blood will be on our hands. So we have to warn men and women to escape hell. Whether they hear or whether they forbear. The word of God tells us that there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repented. More than 90 and 9 that need no repentance. Mankind have an eternal destiny. One eternal destiny. It's either we are going to be going to heaven or we are going to be going to hell. There is no middle ground after we leave this earth. The eternal salvation of souls should be our first priority. I personally believe that if we are having church, week in, week out, Sunday after Sunday, you can have an auditorium full of all 50,000, it doesn't matter. If we can only prepare people for this life, we are doing foolishness. We might as well shut down. Because this life is only brief, it's only for a while. But what about the eternal destiny of man? If you really have a heart of compassion, you should want to see souls saved. You should want to see that when people live this life, they're fit for the kingdom. So we have to tell them the truth, whether they hear or they fear. At least let them know that there is a life after this. And it's not a plaything. If we walk straight, if we live right, heaven shall be our portion. But if we do not, then there is a place called hell. And that will have to be our portion. There is no middle ground. There is either one destination, there is one destination, either heaven or hell. And so we have to carry out the great commission and tell them here, tell them there to escape hell. Because when people escape hell and avoid hell, there's only one other place they could end up. And that place is heaven. So the Lord is talking to us very good today by telling us to escape hell. When the Lord is telling us to escape hell, in other words, he's telling us, go to heaven. Make sure you make your calling and election show. Make sure you're on the right side when I come. Make sure that you make it into the polygate city. Make sure that you'll be one of the saints walking on the street of gold. Make sure that you enter in on the judgment day. Hallelujah. That's why the Lord is saying to us, escape hell. If any human being escape hell, then they will be fit for the kingdom. Thank God that there is a life to look forward to after this life is over. Because in this world, there are so many pains and there are so many aches. Mental tragedy, emotional tragedy, Stress and all sorts of issues of all nature. Every kind of problem you could think about, it's like it's everywhere. Everybody you talk to, almost they're going through one thing or the other. So this world is not our home. We are only passing through. And that's why the word of God said, if it's in this life alone, we have hope. We are of all men most miserable. But thank God there is a glorious hope. Hallelujah. Beyond the grave. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for the songs of Zion this morning. Telling us when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Hallelujah. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout. The victory. Hallelujah. That's why we are serving God. 
that one of these days we will live and we will reign with the risen Lord. Hallelujah! When we make our calling and election sure with God, the word of God tells us very clearly. If you look in the books of in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 58. When we know the word of God, we would not be easily swayed by a lot of false doctrines that are going around. Some are saying that they're going to stay here and inherit the earth, but we know better than that because that's not what our Bible tells us. Verse 51 tells us, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Hallelujah! In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Come on! And this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Come on somebody. One of these days, this body that is full with so much eggs, we're going to put it one side and we're going to get a brand new body. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. This body is not going to have no pain in it and no eggs in it. The body is not going to feel tiredness. We're not going to feel hungry anymore. One of these days, we're going to have a wonderful body. Hallelujah, eternal body. Hallelujah. That will last for all eternity. We will be changed. In a moment and in the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. This mortal body that dies after a while is going to go one side. And we're going to put on immortality. We're going to have an eternal body that never wears out. Never grows old. Hallelujah. Never grow old. Never grow old. In that land where I shall never, never grow old. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us, us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody give Jesus Christ some praise in the house. Because he has made the way for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To reign with him one of these days in a brand new body. Hallelujah. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. I came to tell somebody today. You might feel a bit weary sometimes. You might feel a bit tired sometimes. You might feel a bit challenged sometimes with the cares of this world. But hang on in there. Hallelujah. Keep on moving forward. Be steadfast. Come on. Make yourself strong in God and in the power of his might. And you will, you will make it into the kingdom one day. Just be steadfast and unmovable. Always abounding. Making progress. Amen. In the work of the Lord. Keep moving. Tell somebody keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know. Your labor is not in vain. Payday is coming. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, payday is coming. Hallelujah. Payday is coming after a while. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody rejoice with me. Payday is coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes you walk for man and you're looking forward to payday. You want to treat yourself to a brand new suit. You want to treat yourself to something special. You probably tell the wifey or the children we're going to go out to this wonderful restaurant. And you mean to say, pay the turn up. And some of the boss, them so wicked. They come up with us uh, to excuse. 
I'm telling you, things now is bright this month. And we never had, we never make the kind of money that we were planning, we were, we were hoping to make. And so, bear with me, bear with me another week. But thank God for God. Payday is coming and it pay good. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Exactly what he said he's going to reward us with, he's going to reward us with it. Hallelujah. His pay is good. So we can work for him with all our heart and all our might. Because our labor is not in vain. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have some of our mothers here working for all 40, 50, 60 years, 70 years, all amount, kind of amount of years, but they're still working in the vineyard doing the little bits and pieces. One of these days, they're going to hear, well done. Amen. Well done, brothers and sisters. Keep on keeping on. It's not in vain. We will hear, well done. No good and faithful servant, once we endure to the end. Amen. Now is not time to get careless. Now is not time to play around with salvation. You know, it is so sad that we have become so earthly focused that we have become of no heavenly good. They used to say the old time church was so heavenly minded that it was no earthly good. Now it switched around the other way. You go to even funeral these days and you can't even get a serious message about your soul and your eternal destination. Funeral. People skylarking and joking with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not realizing that hell is a real place and we need to escape the place. And if we know the terror of God, we should warn men and persuade men to go to heaven instead. But people have just watered down the thing and got it like it's a joke business. A soul is very precious to God. And so in these last days, we don't want to lose focus. We don't want to get caught up with just the things of this world only. They have their place. But it's heaven we after. Amen. God, thank you for everything I could receive on this earth. Yeah. But that don't sweet me good yet. That don't fulfill my desire yet. That don't make me feel as if I've achieved and I've acquired anything yet. I want to make sure that my calling is sure. And that I hear, well done, the good and faithful servant. Amen. And so... Believers not preaching about heaven, not preaching about the eternal um, destination of man. People not singing so much about heaven like before time. People not really talking about it as before time. And so it seems as if that the interest, the desire, the thirst, the commitment that we had to make it in, it has quelled down a lot from when I first got saved. It was something that believers spoke about all the time. They sang about it. And when you hear them sing, won't it be a time we get over yonder, man, people jumping and shouting and dancing all over the auditorium. Hallelujah. Because we really took that glorious hope seriously. And we were determined by the grace of God to make it in. So because we know driving Mercedes Benz that get to our heads so that we want to stay or not. Because we're living in detached house in some kind of bungalow and up so in some sort of um, top class place with some rich millionaire neighbors that we think now we have arrived. It really doesn't matter what we acquire in this world. They're only things. And nothing should satisfy us until we enter heaven's gate. Amen. Because when we get over there, the goal where people are killing one another here for it become like footwear, foot, foot, foot material for us to walk on. Straight of gold. Every turn we turn, we're going to see splendor. Beyond what we could imagine. My father told me on his dying bed, he said, Eugene, hold me hand. Let me see if I'm still here or not with you because we have cancer and I'm in heaven. And he said, I got a vision, I got a good glimpse of what it's all about. And he tell me, man, I read a lot of things in scripture. I read plenty things, plenty glorious things about heaven. But he began to tell me not even the half. Eugene, not even the half has been told. It is even more glorious than you could imagine or you could read about. Brothers and sisters.
sisters carry on. Keep on serving God because it is worthwhile. Come on. One of these days. One of these days. One of these days. Let us be true and faithful because we want to make it in. Oh, glory to God. Thank God that Peter is going to be there. Thank God Paul is going to be there. Thank God Daniel is going to be there. Hallelujah. Abraham and Isaac and Joseph and all those wonderful saints of God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be excited to speak with them and talk with them and to enjoy fellowship with them. But when I see Jesus, oh glory to God. Oh hallelujah. When I see Jesus, it will mean everything to me. The one who died for me and redeem me from sin. Somebody want to see Jesus in the house? You want to be in the presence of the Lord forevermore? Hallelujah! That is what we are striving for! That is what we are striving for. Let us not get careless. Let us not get lukewarm. Let us not get off focus. Let us not get off track. But keep our eyes on the prize. The word of God tells us, seeing that we are May I have so many cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run this race with patience. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a fast race. We have to endure. Run the race with patience. And if you have spiritual eyes, just like how when you watch the long distance race and you hear that bell going on, palang, 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 that means the athletes know that is one more lap to go. So even they've been going around 10, 15 times. When you hear, they hear that bell. Sometimes the speed that they put on. You want to know where they get such speed from. And some of them come from behind and come right to the front and win the race. So in the spiritual realm, we should hear the alarm bell going off telling us we are coming up to last lap now. And now we are on the final leg. We should be putting in everything for God. We shouldn't slacken our riding now. We have to be dedicated more than ever before. Committed more than ever before. Sold out more than ever before. Nobody should have to force you to do anything in the kingdom. Because if you want to make heaven your, your, your future destination and your eternal home, that desire should be inside you to be, to be faithful. To be sober. And to be steadfast. And to be unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord. And as much as we know, labor is not in vain. Amen? Let us stay focused. Let us stay committed. Because the things of this world, they're only for a little short time. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 says, Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. Once we get our priority right and keep our priorities right, one of these days it's going to be worth it all. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! When we get over yonder, Revelation 21 verse 4 says, and God shall wipe away, hallelujah, all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Hallelujah. One of these days, we're not going to cry any longer. One of these days, we're not going to feel any pain anymore. Hallelujah. Because all the former things that are not good of this world, they will be passed away. Hallelujah. And we are going to be with Jesus forevermore. Glory to God. Let us then be true and faithful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep on, keep it on. Keep on, keep it on. It's going to be worth it when we get over to the other side. If you're not saved, today is a good day to be saved. It's full time to get saved. The broad road is only going to lead you to hellfire. Doesn't matter how many people go down there. 
Nobody could help nobody. Everybody's trapped in their own pain. And nobody can help nobody. So it doesn't matter if a multitude is going down there. You say majority going there anyhow. That doesn't mean that it's going to be less treacherous for you. Everyone will be trapped in their own pain. And nobody could help the other. So my advice to you today is to escape hell. All that is going on down there is weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. And it never ends. It's not worth your while going there. Not to please friends, not to please family, not to please anybody. Make your own choice, make your own mind up, and escape hell for your own soul's sake. Don't stay in sin to please anybody. Because you have your own soul to think about. Come to Jesus today. Before it's too late. Amen. If you're not saved. Today is a good day to be saved. God don't want anybody to go to that place. He wants you to escape hell. You may be saved. But you want. To go higher in God. You want to get deeper in God. You don't want to be among the lukewarm. You don't want to be among those who are at ease in Zion. You don't want to be like the foolish virgins. You want the Holy Spirit in filling. You want more of God. You want more of the anointing. You want more of everything that will help you to be ready on that day. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.